I foolishly decided to pursue a law degree, but I was playing music, I was playing in a band, and I just started acting then. Those two things were happening, they became much more important than going to college. I didn't really go in at all, and I failed gloriously in the first year. I don't know, sometimes you feel like a total waste of space, really, when you look at people who have proper jobs. And then you go, what, the, what am I doing? I remember when I was younger, I was really disappointed that I had such a normal upbringing. And I was like, oh, I wish I had a terrible youth or something that I could draw on. I think that's a lot of bollocks, actually. I think it's, it's what you have inside. How you're able to be creative, it, it didn't even come from a place of pain. It didn't come from a place of sorrow or, I don't you know, it just comes from the need to perform. If you do hold out for things, if you, if you really stick to your principles, I mean, you can't always do that. It's impossible in this industry, but if you try and be like pretty stubborn with your principles, I think it pays off, you know? You're just compelled to do it, you know? I just love stories. I love interesting characters. I love people behaving in a strange way. I love when you go, why is that person behaving like that? So transgression is much more interesting than somebody who does the right thing all the time. As an audience member, I, I, I find that much more interesting. When the real drama kicks in, when the stakes are raised, which to me, you know, that is real drama, when the stakes become about kind of life and death. You're fully invested in these characters. People need to go to the pictures, and people need some sort of escape. Artists don't let people down, like politicians let people down, like bankers let people down. They follow you, the work by fluctuate, but they keep making it, they keep trying, and they keep giving some sort of sucker, I think, you know. If you ever were cruising in, in your career and felt sort of confident in everything that you did, uh, then there would be no challenge and, and no excitement and no danger. It has to feel a little dangerous, I think. Yeah. You have to feel, certainly at the beginning, I don't know if I can do this. And then you go at it, and that drives it, that, that gives you the hunger and the energy to, to go at it. I, I feel I've been lucky in that I've moved always between theatre, television, and movies. So if one avenue got a little clogged at one point, I could just jump into another avenue. And right. I probably have done that in the past. And I think you, I've always felt that if anyone would say to any artist, we'd love that, can you do it again? Right. You know, that happens not, not just in our business, but it happens if any time there's a potential for something being commodified or uh, being repeated. I, I think the artist or the creative person can be in the other direction. In yeah, but luckily I would always jump from one to the other, so I've never, I've never felt that way. And re-collaborating with people is always really good for your creative soul. Like, yeah. You know, I wonder about back in the 70s, like when people came in to see a movie just totally uh, and it was like a fresh experience. It must be very, very exciting. But nowadays, everybody's just blogging about everything. So you kind of expecting stuff, uh, which is a bit of a shame. I guess I'm interested in duality. I'm interested in contradiction. I'm interested in light and shade. I'm interested in the kind of in-between things of human behavior. And, you know, villains or heroes don't really interest in that, that world but in between. And I think we're in a good time for telling stories about characters like that. People look for want three-dimensional characters <clears throat> in, in, in either film or television, and because none of us are simple and straightforward, all of us are complicated. And I think people identify with characters that, even though they may be heightened, certainly in, in, in peak people, extremely heightened. But yet it is a story about a family and completely connected to that. So yeah, complexity is essential in storytelling. I think. If you're job is to portray something truthfully and honestly, then if, if it's happening in front of your eyes, it, it helps you enormously and it's a big advantage. So, it, uh, you know, when the spits fires are flying over for real and the water's on fire and the destroyer is tipping and it's all happening around you, of course, you're heading towards a more truthful response, you know? So it, it, it helps us and I think it also helps the viewer. Is there anything you ever find hard to understand about Tommy or that you've struggled with with how to play a certain aspect of Tommy's character? You can't play a character no matter how far away he is from you without, you know, bringing something of yourself to it. And the more you play it, then I suppose the more part of you he becomes. He never seems to sleep, he never seems to eat. That sort of relentless drive is really hard here. You have to understand that it's, he's formed by his experiences, you know, and he's a leader of men, or there may be somebody that can just, you know, 
grab them by the ears and go, "You're going to be, you're going to be all right. Let's, let's, you're going to be okay." And the unafraid thing is is quite powerful. That you know, unafraid to die or accepting of death due to the, to what he witnessed in the in the First World War, uh, and you know, has he has seen things that you know no man should should see and live with. And they all experienced trauma like that, and now we have a name for it. You know. PTSD, but um, so yeah, unafraid, and I think he doesn't see a ceiling on what you can achieve in life because he knows that it can be snapped out at any moment. When you're acting, there shouldn't really be any past or future. There should just be the present moment and full awareness, you know, of what's happening in the present moment. So I tend not to intellectualize anything at that stage. It has to be purely instinct. Actors do get treated. Um, you're used to being in a kind of a bubble. When I work, I work very intensely and get, get very heavily involved in it. It's quite immersive. And, but then when I don't work, I don't work at all for quite a long time, as long as I can keep it going. And then and then I go back into it really intensely. I couldn't work continuously. I couldn't go job to job. I don't have the capacity or the stamina. Uh, creatively to do that. I, I need to rest after a job, sort of fall back in love with it again because I'm, yeah. I'm always exhausted after work. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's it. I'm out. Leave me alone. And, you know, <laughs> being an actor is quite, again, as you guys know, it's like, if you're not careful, it's quite infantilizing, you know, because you're like, so I need a break from it because it is, uh, it's a strange world and it's not real and I, and I love it. That's why having a family is so important because they, they will always let you know about what real life <laughs> yeah. is. And also, if you're going to represent the average person, then you've got to live as best you can as an average person. <laughs> I'm always very conscious of that and just want to kind of live as decent a life off screen as I can, you know.